Hello again YouTube. Today we're on our way up to uh, Clarksburg. I'm going to be putting uh, front brakes in a 2018 Hyundai Elantra, I believe. Hmm. See you when we get there. Looks like I was right. It is a uh, 2018 Hyundai Elantra. So we've got the scan tool here going. And we're just going to do basic little health scan on it. 16 pin. Manually select. Oops, we don't want manually. We want automatically search. Elantra, year, two liter engine, bin, cool. And we'll just do a quick health report. All right, and we got no faults, no faults. Everything's all clear, fault report. We'll save the information and now we'll get to uh, replacing the front brakes and grabbing the tools that we're going to be needing at the breaker bar 21 millimeter socket uh, 17 millimeter socket 14 millimeter socket impact driver and battery drill and battery Zilla glide clamp for pushing back the pistons caliper file and a brand new wheel we're going to try to use on uh, cleaning up the caliper bracket. Make sure to see if that works well. And of course a socket wrench. Jack stands and jack. Let's go ahead and get this thing up. Now what we're going to attempt to do is put the jack underneath this bolt right here. And we'll jack the car up. Grab a 21 millimeter. Start loosening up all of the lug nuts. Once you've got them all loosened up, go ahead and jack the car up in the air. Make sure your parking brake is set in advance. More than sufficient working height. I'm going to get underneath here when the jack stands. And use a rotor to keep her from sinking into the hot pavement. to get this combination underneath there. A 21 inch lift jack so it'll get this thing up high enough. safe secure spot right directly underneath the frame and lower it down move the jack to the other side to repeat When you're doing the front brakes, you want to make sure that you've got uh, both of your front wheels off the ground. Go ahead and take the tire off. On the wheel 
wheel doesn't want to come off, give it a good swift kick. I think I got a two pound, five pound Once I got the tire off, you got two screws in here to hold it, the rotor on. Got an impact driver set for that and a hammer. Didn't realize I needed that up ahead of time. back away until we need it on the other side. Now go ahead and reposition your pet trainer underneath the wheel. Put the heavy stuff off of it. Lug nuts up in the corner out of the way. And the other heavy tools down on the edges so that it doesn't blow away in the wind on you, if you get any wind. Everything down here and ready. Go ahead and turn the steering wheel in the direction that you're going to be working on. A 14 millimeter wrench. bottom bolts out. Put those over by the lug nuts. Put the caliper, we'll put the clamp over the caliper. banjo bolt in the outer brake shoe and put just enough pressure on it to start compressing it. You see the caliper moving, you'll know that you've accomplished what you need to to loosen it up. And another tool I forgot is the hook to support the caliper. You take your hook, bring it up over your coil spring, and caliper off, and just Set the hook through it, hang it up out of the way. Take special note of any of the odd things that you might see in here, like these particular clips right here. They're designed to push the brake pads apart. You're going to have to reuse those unless the hardware kit came with them. And apparently the hardware kit came with them. Very good. And they're a little bit stuck, so we're going to have to do a little cleaning on the caliper bracket. They're not too, too bad, but they're still kind of bound in there. And this one here's got a uh, strange backing plate on it. quite sure of the purpose of that, but I'm sure I'll figure it out somewhere along the lines. Although I doubt we have to reuse that. That's what a caliber pushes into, right? It's, it's, usually those are designed to help cut down on chattering, but what this strange shape on the top is for, other than maybe for visual inspection through the top of the caliper, I'm not really sure. It did, because it doesn't touch anything, it's not in line with anything, so I think it's there just as a visual aid to indicate where and there's definitely a little bit of a lip on these rotors. They're not chewed, but there's there's definitely some wear to them. It's got to be the other wheel then, because I know I definitely heard scraping. Yeah, this brake pad. Lock to hold it in place. I'll just leave that for now. Let's get the caliper bracket off. That was the 17 millimeter.
on the Yola cause that probably rusted in pretty good. Most of them around here are. And a short little 17 millimeter bolt. And the bottom one's being a real stinker. So I'm going to go grab some penetrating oil to help loosen that one up. Going to be needing some of this too. back and forth a couple times work the oil into it and off comes the bracket. Get these two screws out of here now. And don't lose these screws. They're not critical but they really do help with the assembly. We set those over with the lug nuts and the caliper bolts. Small hammer, knock it off. Right, I need to put it in neutral and get a bigger hammer. Now, don't forget that when you put the vehicle in neutral, you need to push the brake pedal down to release the park interlock. Don't push it down too far, or you pop your piston out. But once you've got it neutral, you can rotate your rotor. You want to hit it in an inward fashion to make the rotor essentially bounce. Just like that, it comes off. All right, and then while you got the wheel off, as usual, you get in here and do your inspection. You know, make sure that there's no moisture around your strut boot. The spring's intact. There's no brakes or pieces in it. The power steering rack boot is nice and good shape. There's no leaks, no wetness, no holes. Check the boot around your tie rod ends. Your sway bar lengths, make sure there's no rattle or movement in that. Your axle boot, your lower control arm, bushings back there. And in here, you make sure there's no cracks. Check your ball joint. Everything here looks spectacular, and it should be. It's only a two year old car. Just for a quick one while I think of it, this is why we use a pet trainer. Otherwise, all of this would end up all over the driveway. So we're going to start taking these brakes, open up that package, pull out the hardware, get this rotor from Amazon, get that opened up and cleaned up, and start reassembling this. All right, I'm going to move things around a little bit, get myself some room here. I'm going to take the caliper bracket, get the hardware out of it, take a quick note if there's any kind of a difference between them. And in this case, there is no difference between them. That's good. Set those off to the side. We're going to get in here now. And we're going to clean up these surfaces right here. Get the rust off of here. We got this file right here for doing that that fits right down in there. And get the hard scaling off with this. And then we're going to use the new composite wheel that I just picked up and see what that'll do for polishing these up. Remember to make sure you get to your, the landing surface that the brake pressure is applied to clean. I'm grab the new wheel, make sure it's going to fit into that groove. And it will, that's good. That into the chuck of the drill. Always be careful you don't catch your boots. Make sure that all moves nice and easy. 
These do not need to be re-lubricated, which is nice. You don't have to disturb the seal on them. Just make sure you don't catch those and put a hole in them. Now once you get them polished up, you can go ahead and put some uh, silicone grease on those to help keep them from rusting back up some more. And a little quarter inch dab, usually all it needs. And again, machine surfaces, sharp edges, be careful you don't cut your finger. case I may actually have more grease than what I need. Make sure you get it all the way down into the corners and again all the surfaces that the hardware comes in contact with. And make sure you don't have any globs of grease sticking in towards the middle that it might contact with the rotor. Paper towels. Not only need the paper towels to clean your hands off, but you're going to need them to wipe down the rotors. Now we'll grab the bag of hardware. Grill of the package open. All the hardware up and out of the way. Go brakes out of the way too. And grab hardware clips. Grab just the two. Don't worry about the springs just yet. Make sure that they're identical and the same as what you took out. Go ahead and snap those down into place. Again, they should always fit all the way down in and firmly. fit in one way so you really can't screw those up and then we'll put this aside grab the rotor put the rotor on and clean it up does that rotor have uh, oil on it oh yes that oil on the inside inside and water on the outside Chris, have the, keys? the rotor's cold I'm gonna go grab a wire brush, clean the hub up. Alright. Get the wheel out of there, put the wire brush in. And we'll just get in here and clean the yuck off of this. Grab the fluid film. Spray that down, give it a nice little coating. That'll help keep everything rusting up in the future. Now remember where your screw holes are. You're gonna need to line these up with the screw holes. And then put those two little screws back in. Just snug them down really good. 
I'm gonna grab your can of brake cleaner, rotate it. paper towels spray your paper towel down and you can wipe any excess that still remains on it off Go ahead and put the bracket back on. Chunk off the threads. And put that back in. All the way down, finger tight. And a 17 millimeter in the breaker bar. Now keep in mind these usually go to around 100 foot pounds. You know, if you got a torque wrench and you're concerned about the torques, I'll include that down in the uh, description. remember you want to make them really tight but not so tight that the next guy won't be able to get them out well let's break open the package of the new brake patch and keep in mind we've got two squealers here and two without you'll also notice there are some differences in these brake pads so these are going to be your inboard, these are going to be your outboard, I would suspect, but I'm going to double check this, because if you put them in and these hit, it's the wrong side. And in this case, these will hit, so this has to be the inboard, and these would be the outboard. And because the inboard has this weird little thingy on it, I'm going to add it to these because it lines up and it fits perfectly and then we're going to take this and slide it in remember your squealer always goes on the leading edge and if you put it on the trailing edge and it catches it just snaps the thing off it doesn't annoy the customer to death the idea is is to bring this to your attention if it's low and then go ahead and just 
rotate those pads in place. Make sure that there's free movement in it. You do not need to lubricate these surfaces. And I'd actually advise not to if avoidable because the lubrication will just attract dirt. And then you're out bar, outboard with the two. And there's other than this not being the same exact place. There's no difference between these really. So these will go over to the other side of the car. Okay. Now we're going to take the caliper. And turn it upside down here. Move it back a little bit so I don't get it all over everything else. And we're just going to spray it down. Make sure that everything's nice and clean before we retract the piston. It's all nice and clean and shiny. Let that dry for a couple of seconds. Rinse the stuff off the motor that it's got all over it. Don't worry about the fuzzies from your paper towel. They'll dry out. And Come right off like nothing. Grab one of your old brake pads, set it in front of the piston, grab the clamp, over the bolt in the back, and then slowly push your piston all the way back in. And again, watch this boot right here very carefully. Make sure that it's not billowing out anywhere. If you see it billowing, you might be going too fast with it, but basically it means there's air trapped underneath it. You don't want that to happen because if it billows out and your brake pad bottoms out doing this, you will pinch a hole on it. And then moisture will get in, it'll rust up your piston, and that'll be the end of that. Almost there, double check it all the way around. We've gotten to the point where we can feel the resistance. We'll stop right there. And then pistons all the way down in, and I just knocked off that little clip. Let's put that back on again. It only lines up one way, so you don't have to worry about it. And then there was no hardware on the outside. What a mess. And rotate your caliper back down. Put it in place. Push in your pins. Get your bolts started. 14 millimeter bolts. Again, I'll try to put the torque on these down in the comments below. Make sure you got your free movement in the caliper. And then torque those bolts down. These are usually uh, usually on the lower end of the torque, probably about 20. Make those nice and snug. And you're not trying to break them or get them stuck in there permanently. And the side's done. Go ahead and put the wheel back on. I forgot something. Did you see what I forgot? Don't forget these. There should be four of these. And I think the package, yeah, the package has got all four. So I'm going to take the caliper back, caliper back off and do this again. Another reason to not over tighten bolts. You might need to take them back out yourself.
I could make a blooper out of that, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it right in there. You know, tiny little holes. Put them in the holes. So they're facing towards the middle. Same thing with the bottom one in the hole. And keep in mind, you're going to need to hold on to these brake pads because if they move the way they're supposed to, they're going to want to pop right out on you. Hold the brake pads in place, and then again, place your caliper over the brake pads, on up your pins, and we're going to have to modify those springs just a little because those springs are popping back out of the brake shoes. And that bottom one just does not want to stay in there. Caliper up here, and what you want to do is See these pins, this one here is bent out. You want to bend the other one out as well. Anything you've got that'll do the job. That went the wrong way. The guy from the um stuff is coming. Alright top one's popping out, same thing. So bend those out. This is just to make sure they're not going to go popping back out on their own when they're in place. All right. Now we can go ahead and put the caliper back on. Clips didn't pop out of place. They should be right against each other almost in there. Both right in line with each other. And tighten that back down again. Straighten out the wheel. And put the wheel back on. And then transfer everything over to the other side of the car. Do the same thing. And because of the amount of difficulty I had initially getting this wheel off, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. It's actually not that bad. I'm just going to give it a spray with fluid on the help keep it from bonding again. Just like you're spray painting it. You, know, you don't need to get it all over the place, just the surfaces that make contact. Just a little bit. We'll go ahead and put the wheel on. Nice and grease on the rotor. lug nuts, start them by hand, always make sure you got them at least two or three turns so that you'll know for sure that they're threaded on correctly, then you can go ahead and spin them on.
pet trainer over to the other side and get the other side done. You know, the customer had advised me that the reason he was doing all of this was because of the noise that was coming out of it. And as you can see from the looks of this rotor, we were just starting to get a little bit of a metal to metal scrape. Starting to wear through the, the lining on the pad almost completely. And the squaler is broke off. So that probably annoyed him to the point where it snapped. And make sure you torque down your lug nuts. on both sides. And unless you're into scaring people half to death, make sure you press that brake pedal down a couple of times. Get that nice firm pedal. Put the OBD cover back on. And then take it out for a quick verification trip. up to about 50 and then hard on the brakes. And you gotta back up to 50, only slow down to about 40 or so. And if you're entering Vermont, plan on staying. <laughs> and we'll turn around here, head back. So, if you guys found this one helpful, feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. I look forward to the comments, and please don't forget to hit that notifications bell. Catch you on the next one, and don't forget, you got no more excuses. Pick up those wrenches. <laughs>